All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to call the July 25th licensing hearings and public safety committee agenda to order. Uh, roll call. Alder Heidemann. Here. Alder Prella. Here. Alder LaFave. Here. Alder Peterson is excused. Alder Russ is here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. We'll do an introduction of committee members and staff. I'm Alder Russ, District 8, and chair of this committee. My name is Audrey Kratz. I am the new assistant city attorney. Chuck Adams, city attorney. Uh, Alder Nightham, 10th District. Kristen Magalski, police chief. Lieutenant Matt Walsh, police department. Fire chief. Eric Machiao, fire chief. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if we were going out with the guests. Grazie, Pirrela, District 7. Bob LaFave, uh, District 4, and Vice Chair. Kathy Hoffman, City Attorney's Office. Darcy Bierning, City Clerk. Uh, Mayor Bruin, City Clerk. Craig Hoffman, Public Observer. Okay. Eric Bauer, Journalist. Okay. David Kosensky, Public Observer. Okay. Tim Gillis, same. Kathleen DeShazer, Observer. Uh, Scott Feldy, I'm here for an appeal. Alrighty, I'm going to lay some ground rules for items 12 and 13, as well as 11. I'm going to allow the city to talk first, and then I will let the person in question or the action for speak, or a person representing them speak, and then our committee will raise hands and ask questions individually. And if they have, and if you interrupt, or if we have public, the public interrupting, I'm going to ask you to leave. So I want to keep this you know, orderly. So I'm going to move items 12 and 13 up to our, oh, first, actually, I'm looking for approval of minutes from the July 10th meeting, 2024. Move to approve. Second. All in favor of approving those minutes? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye, those are approved. All right, now I'm going to move items 12 and 13 up. RO number 29-24-25 by the city clerk's main communication from Holden and Han SC regarding Dave's who's in liquor license, as well as discussion. Uh, please don't shut the door. Nope. You can't shut it. As, and discussion and possible action regarding the voluntary license conditions previously agreed to by David A. Rapinski. So, Chief, yes, Mr. Up. Chair, um, I think we should invite the uh, Mr. Rapinski here. I think they're still standing up. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And then you might want to go over the ground rules. Yeah, yeah, you know, we got a lot of public out there. <coughs> what those brewers? Oh, they're unbelievable. <coughs> Would you like us to set it off? He said, "Mr. Rapinski." There are chairs in the other room they can bring on over if you wish. You want me to grab some? So I don't know if we'll have enough chairs, but I can grab them. I think most of us can stand otherwise. Yeah, Coralie. Alrighty, since most of the people in here were not here from the beginning, I laid some ground rules. The city is going to talk on the item, then whoever the item is about will have the ability to speak. The committee will be able to raise hands. I will call on them individually and they will be able to talk or ask questions. And then you'll be able to answer whether it be the city or any of the individuals. Uh, I'm, if there is any public outcry or anything like that, you will be asked to leave because I want to keep this orderly. And want to keep it to pertain to the people that are involved in this. 
So, as I said, we are going to go to items 12 and 13, RO number 29-24-25 by City Clerk for making a communication from Holden and Han SC regarding Dave Susan Incorporated Liquor License. Discussion and possible action regarding amended voluntary license condition previously agreed to by David A. Rapinski, an agent. So I will just start by saying none of the people on this committee were on this committee when these were initially passed. So I will now hand it to the city. So I'll, nope, leave that open. Sorry. So I will. I'll just give a brief sort of uh, um, sort of the facts of, of the things, and then I'll leave it to the police department to sort of uh, make the case that they want to make. Uh, so what happened here is was in 2022, Mr. Rapinski uh, voluntarily surrendered his license for 30 days and then agreed to abide by various conditions in lieu of a revocation hearing. Uh, what had happened at that point was uh, there was uh, there was an intention to go to revocation to revoke the license. But rather than go to that full hearing, uh, he, uh, Mr. Rapinski was offered um, that if he would voluntarily surrender for 30 days and voluntarily take on these conditions, then the city would not go to revocation. Uh, those are the conditions that are existed that are listed on Exhibit One of, of the communication that Attorney Mahan uh, sent. It's my understanding now that uh, Mr. Pinsky wishes to remove some or all of those conditions. Uh, you may, if you wish, choose to remove some or all or none of those conditions, um, and then. Once you make a determination, if he chooses not to accept your determination, then it would be as if we would go back to the status quo uh, antebellum, basically, and uh, we'd go to a revocation hearing uh, as has been done in 2022. Um, I will say because there could be a hearing, you do have to be somewhat careful, right? At this point, you're, you're simply making the determination as to whether you should change uh, the conditions um, and not necessarily finding facts as to whether the license should be suspended or revoked because if you have a hearing you will have to make that determination based solely on facts that are brought to you at that hearing. Uh, so, so just that that um, uh, sort of warning I, I think is, is appropriate. Uh, it is my understanding that um, uh, Mr. Rapinski has stated that he'd like uh, some or all those conditions to be amended, uh, including conditions prohibiting underage patrons from being on premises. There was, uh, from the initial uh, uh, conditions, that was changed to allow him to have his uh, pin setters on, on site. Um, and then the use of metal detectors or wands at the entrances to the bars. That I may be asking for more today, I don't know, uh, but when, he, uh, when you hear him speak, you can ask him that. I think I would turn it over to the police department then to sort of present their opinion on this. Yeah, I would just reiterate what the city attorney said, and that's the way that we got here is by the city moving for revocation and offering an alternative to Mr. Rapinski. Rather than go to a revocation hearing, he agreed to these conditions. Um, the conditions were put in place to help um, create a safe um, environment in and around that tavern and in and around that neighborhood. I think they're all reasonable things. Um, from looking at them and reading the communication um, from his attorney, I think there is some minor adjustments that the committee could make um, to align with, with, with his business practices, what, what he's trying to do or what at least what they're communicating what they're trying to do. I think our experience is that over the last several years, we've seen what, what I would call an up and down pattern where um, we have meetings with him and things improve and his business is fine and we don't have any calls or incidents there. Um, and then as things go, <coughs> then things get loose and we start to get repeated calls there for things that could be prevented. Um, and some of these conditions are things that that would help prevent that. And so that's why I think they're important. I would also point out that many of these conditions um, that are, are in here were originally proposed in 2021 as part of a chronic nuisance hearing. Um, some of them were 
in that meeting um, suggested by the police department, but then in a, in a nuisance abatement plan that was presented by Mr. Rapinski on June 8th of 2021, he gave a list of things that he would do to abate the nuisance that was occurring. And so some of them come directly from him and not from the police department. Anything else we need to add? Alrighty, Mr. Rapinski, you or your whoever's representing you may speak now. Okay, if you don't mind. Uh, my name is Richard Hahn. I represent uh, Dave's Who's In Inc. Um, I, I, I respectfully disagree with um, uh, what has been set forth to this point in the meeting. Um, this issue was initiated probably because a January 1st, 2022 um, New Year's Eve get together at the tavern. Uh, there were some citations issued and then uh, a letter was sent out by uh, Mr. Adams on February 24th, 2022 providing Mr. Rapinski with the option of either a suspension for a limited period of time or permanent revocation if there was a challenge uh, and there was an attempt to go before the council or this committee. Um, Mr. Rapinski uh, made what I thought a prudent decision and that is he agreed to the suspension. Um, Mr. Adams' letter of February 24th indicated that the conditions upon reopening was the signing of an agreement I cannot find any signed agreement anywhere. There were negotiations as to certain terms, and those negotiations ended via email sometime in April. I've asked Mr. Adams for copies of those agreements. He said I should make an open records request, which I did. There's no agreement, written agreement in that open records uh, uh, response that I received a matter of about an hour and a half ago, even though I made the open records request some time ago. Uh, there was then a meeting um, of this licensing committee, different members, understandably, back on May 25th, 2022. Uh, at that time, there's a discussion about how long these conditions will last, even though there is no written agreement. Uh, there is a uh, discussion back and forth with whether the agreement should last for a year or a uh, I think Mr. Adams said it could be forever, but there's no criteria which governs your decision apparently and no rules uh, which relate to how long it can be. But the agreement appeared to be at that time that it was to be for a year okay? and it didn't expire. All right, and you can review that, it's on YouTube. You all can look at uh, that meeting, uh, but that seems to be the final consensus was that it was to be for a year even though we had no written agreement, I reiterate. Um, then on um, uh, March 24th, 2023, without much discussion at all, it was renewed again for another year, even though there was discussion that it was only to last for a year in the previous committee meeting. Um, uh, Mr. Adams writes to Mr. Rapinski then on April, uh, on December 14th, 2023, alleges uh, violations again, which are un unidentified, unsubstantiated. I ask for clarification, I get no response. I make a number of open records requests, don't get any uh, response there either. Um, we then uh, fast forward to June 30th this year. Uh, the license is applied for. Um, Mr. Rapinski is told that he cannot get his license unless he signs this agreement um, that is uh, dated, I believe, February 24th, 2022, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, I then send that letter that has been sent to you with all the attachments that explains this chronology on um, uh, July 3rd. We have a staff meeting on July 8th. Um, there have been there were some negotiations. Uh, with Mr. Walsh and Mr. Adams. It was my understanding uh, that first they, I know that first they offered to recommend taking off the 
uh, condition relating to the wanding, the metal detecting, uh, if we would agree to continue the provisions, the conditions relating to uh, no underage persons. We said we couldn't do that because we have pin setters, we have families that come in that want fish dinners with underage persons, and we couldn't do that. And it sounded to me like they were going to recommend both those conditions being deleted. Um, I, I'm afraid I don't know um, the representative's name from the police department uh, who has uh, alleged that problems with Dave's who's in has been up and down. I think it's been all up for the past two and a half years. I think he's run a very uh, respectable and exemplary business. Um, uh, he has taken upon himself to close on New Year's Eve. I don't know if anybody here, here knows how significant a financial burden that is for a, a establishment like that to close on New Year's Eve. It's a huge financial hit. But because he had such a popular place, he did it because he wanted to cooperate <laughs> with law enforcement. I sent an email um, on, April, on uh, July 17th to Mr. Uh, Adams requesting those signed agreements that we've been talking about. He said, make an open records request. I did that on July 18th. There's no agreements. So what we request today is that you treat him like any other bar owner. Uh, he's, he's run a very um, quiet business recently in the past two, two and a half years. Um, with every tavern, there are some issues, obviously, but we respectfully request that you, in light of this unfortunate timeline and chronology that I've outlined here, uh, that you delete any conditions and give him a license that he can utilize immediately um, uh, as, as soon as we can. Thank you. Party. Does the chair have any questions right away? Or not chair of the committee, sorry. Joe. Hey, Alder thank you, Heidman. Chairman. Yeah, um, looking at these conditions, and again, not having been here when they were established, a lot of this is very common sense. And every bar owner, regardless of Dave's or anybody in Sheboygan, should be following those automatically. Uh, the thing that, that, I, that I kind of I'm puzzled with is the fact that why. Uh, Dave didn't come to this committee and say, you know what, I'm going to sign this agreement, but I want to start looking at every one of these items, and I want to start removing those, and I want to work with you as a committee, make sure that we can do it that way, as opposed to saying, okay, I want this all taken care of, and or, or nothing at all, or I'm going to just, and then go to a hearing uh, for your license. Um, obviously, there's a number of items on there that possibly could be removed. But again, I would have rather seen you been in business, came to our committee and said, hey, listen, because I know the chairman, I know the other members, we're all open to looking at, at this stuff and working with you to remove some of these conditions. But now we're at a point where now we're going to be going, hey, either we remove this and this, or are you going to surrender your license? Or are you going to say, well, now I'm going to want a hearing. What are you going to ask for if we don't change any of these things on, this, um, on these conditions? Okay, if I can respond to that. Uh, first of all, um, I don't know if we really varied from your suggested course of action. We appeared before the staff um, back on July 8th, and we indicated that those two provisions were the particularly vexing ones that troubled us. And I think that's the normal protocol to utilize. Um, uh, and uh, that's why we're here today is they made a recommendation it went to council and then it was recommended to you so uh, we did request that those two com uh, conditions are the most problematic ones and that they be removed and we provided the reasons for that I don't know how else Dave could have proceeded um, uh, he closed down because at that staff committee meeting we're told by Mr. Adams um, uh, signed this agreement which uh, prohibits underage persons on the premises and requires wanding, and we might take care of it later. I'm sorry, but that is not a decision that we want to make and a position we want, we want to be put in. We want to make sure that these conditions are removed and that we're not stuck with a signed agreement, which didn't exist before, 
uh, where we have it renewed for another year. So that's why we did not um, elect to uh, take that part of the Hobson's choice that was provided to us on July 8th. I have a question. Say, Clerk, when, when was this license issued or could have been issued? And how soon could it have been issued? Oh, ooh, I would have to. <laughs> It would have been June. in the middle it of would June. June. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for a July first. For a July 1st date. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a question for the for the chief and lieutenant. Um, when you say that Dave Susan has a history of up and down up and downs, what's that mean and what culminated to the point we got with the suspension? I think that what that means is that there's periods of time when cooperation isn't like it is at other times. So there's periods of times that are documented where there's an incident and we're asking for video and it takes three weeks to get video rather than that night or the next day like every other bar in the city provides it to us. And that doesn't, I'm not here saying that that doesn't occur at right. Dave's. I'm saying that there's periods of time sure. where we go through these things. And it's it's the same thing with disturbances and fights and, mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. There won't be any, and then there'll be a, a whole group of them, sure. and then we have to deal with it, and then. So then the second half of my question is what culminated to the point where we, in 21 or 22 or whatever it was, that we decided to suspend for 30 days? I believe it was a, a series of incidents. So in 2021, they, they were um, designated as a chronic nuisance by the police department. Okay. At that time, there was five incidents that occurred in and around the tavern uh, that we had a meeting with Dave. And the chronic nuisance process is really a process for us to try to collaborate with, with either citizens or business owners to try to put things in place to prevent um, disorder and crime in, in the city. So. Again, there's a process that you can go through. It can be voluntary, it can be can be not voluntary. In this case, Dave met with um, our staff and they talked about the issues that were going on and things that can be put in place. Um, as, as part of that, the, like I said, the police department suggested um, certain things that could be put in place that would be helpful. Um, cooperate with law enforcement investigations to include providing access to video and ID scanner info cooperate fully with the Tavern Safety Co Coalition. At the time, Dave was a board member, um, train staff to review and enforce um, the Tavern Safety Coalition band list, train staff in de-escalation tactics and how to intervene early when they recognize conflict between patrons, manage problem patrons appropriately so that problems do not continue after they leave the tavern, ensure underage people will not be on the premises, um, during that meeting, Dave said that he already used an ID scanner on all patrons. Um, and so continuing that progress was strongly encouraged. After that meeting on June 8th of 2021, um, Dave Lipinski turned in uh, an abatement plan in which he said the things that, that they would do at the bar would be to cooperate with police above and beyond to the best of their ability do their best to make a determination if it's necessary to call police or an inf incident, make steps to de-escalate problems before they become a situation, allow, allow no weapons or backpacks, remain on the board, participate in the Tavern Safety Coalition and follow its guidelines, continue to use the ID scanner, scan all IDs on the weekends, not allow underage people in the bar, manage capacity depending on the event, which is a normally a third of the actual capacity, allowing only 175 to 200 people in, put up posters reminding patrons that they were scanned in and that there may be cameras that are in use. So if there is a problem, they will have their information. And so, so this was a plan that, that we accepted. Mm -hmm. After this happened, there was the two incidents that um, council mentioned on January 1st. And that's then when the revocation process took place. Okay. Since then, there was an incident where we reviewed video, um, Lieutenant Walsh did in 2023, in which, which he found evidence on the video that they weren't using the scanner and they weren't doing something else that they were supposed to be doing. Wanding. They weren't wanding anybody. So those were violations of the conditions that they had agreed to. Okay. So 
was we have a hard copy of being that being sent and between the police department and the city and and mr rapinski or his counsel for that yes yes we do all right all right alder perella so there are, to start with there are a couple of questions did i understand correctly that mr rapinski did not sign the conditions last year correct he did not none were presented to him that's not true where is there it? there is a letter dated may 26 2023 that is in the file that presents the same conditions as it's which was signed by well, it wasn't signed by him that's a misstatement he didn't he didn't sign them but they were presented to him they were sent to him. however the the ordinance that we as a uh, that we with which we released the license was with conditions yes so that is the ordinance i mean that is we released the license that second license so the first one is with conditions and mr rapinski signed for there is a document for that the first time no no there's not there's not i think i saw the document actually so so there's actually three separate yeah. documents that we're talking about there's the what he signed was actually what he worked with with the police department directly there are two documents that I that I see from after the license revocation proceeding started, which was at the time that he renewed his license in 2022, and at the time that he renewed his license in 2023, that list the uh, conditions. They're all the same conditions with one change. In 2023, they, they, uh, they added the exception to the ban on underage premises on the <coughs> Actually so the point I'm trying to make is, besides this last this last um, license, Mr. Rapiski agreed to the conditions last time. <clears throat> False, wrong. He did not. Mr. Adams wrote letters, unilateral letters, uh, <coughs> to Mr. Rapinski. Uh, outlining conditions that were imposed by the committee, but he never signed the agreement. The only signed agreement was the one referenced by the chief of the abatement plan, which was back in 2021, and which is expired and which he complied with. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that verification. With that said, I have a question for the SPD. Um, are other taverns subject to these demands? To this uh, extent, are other taverns re requested to warn or metal, use the metal detector on people to everybody who comes in? Any other tavern in the city? I, I don't know for sure. It's my belief that um, West Coast was um, required to wand during certain hours that that they were open, and at some point. Um, think of what it's called yeah i don't need to know the names there, there was another tavern on michigan that that might have been required to do it for a period of time and then as they cooperated and things got better they weren't anymore because the one thing that sounds a bit odd to me is that we don't really, so for example if we wish the, the license is released every year right so it's in theory every year we should start from scratch and this year we should be considering, okay, how, what happened in the last 12 months that justifies these conditions again? And is that fair? And for fair, I mean, do we apply that to other establishments, right? And, and if we have doubts about that, then maybe we have to review it. I mean, in the sense, if we if we don't apply the same measures to other taverns, we all we all agree that taverns have issues. And some, I, in my district, I, I have a few. No, no. Some taverns have it has issues. Others don't ever have any issues. That's good. That's great. And, and they're all different businesses, and they run different ways. Okay. And they have different no, no, I, I, I don't I don't argue with that. On that, that with you. No, no. I I actually am happy to hear that, but. So do the violation of the last 12 months at Dave's who is in so severe to justify to 
ask or to ask them to abide for the same conditions again. That, that's all. I mean, should yeah, we... in my opinion, if it, if that's what you're asking, I would say yes. I would say when a business owner agrees to certain conditions and then is found not to be following those yeah. conditions, th there should be some action taken. I, I agree with that. And that's the reason that I wanted to know if Mr. Rapisky had signed that agreement. Because if Mr. Rapisky had signed that agreement, it was fully aware of that agreement, and it didn't fall, fall, and fall, he was not, he was not abiding by it. I would agree with you 100%, but it looks like that Mr. Rapisky didn't sign it. So I don't know if there's a, Chuck, can, I, so the, the, lic the license was issued to him with the letter. So okay. He, okay. This, this year, the decision was made to have him sign, because this past year he had he just getting the letter wasn't enough for him to comply and so so it seemed to be a best practice to make him sign but the previous two years he received you have in front of you the 2022 letter mm -hmm. i also have in front of me the 2023 letter mm -hmm. that listed out those requirements and those were sent to him prior to picking up the license mm -hmm. and it was made clear that the the um committee granted the license okay. with those conditions. So of that I'm a little disappointed because if the committee last year released a license with conditions and Mr. Rapisky was aware of this, he should have abided by those. Because if that that was an implied agreement that he would he didn't challenge those conditions last year. He just accepted that letter with those conditions, but then the police department discovered later on that he was not abiding by those conditions. By his own admission, he was not wounding and he was not abiding by these conditions. And of that, I am disappointed. However, at the same time, I would like to um, add that I'm thinking um, for the sake of the business, there are conditions that I would recommend removing. Because this neighborhood is changing, there may be many more families around there, and I want that business to be able to serve minors. So I'm thinking that that is a condition that I would recommend removing. And at the same time, um, as um, Chief Damagoski mentioned, we applied it, for example, the wounding, we apply it for temporary periods to other taverns. Perhaps that's what we should do here too. Um, do the wanding or the metal detector only, for example, as I have read in the documentation, someone else said, uh, had suggested, perhaps only from Friday to Sunday, from nine to closing, instead of having, putting a burden or wanding everybody coming in through the door, which is not something that is doable, in fact, if you think about that, especially if we have kids and family coming, families coming in. All right, Alder with Faith. Okay, uh, to my understanding now, and again, I was not here when the original thing uh, <laughs> came about. Was there any timeline put on these conditions? No. I have a problem with that. I believe that you know, in a in, in a society where we are in the rule of law, that if conditions are put on something like a license that there should be a solid period of time to allow the owner to uh, show that he is following those conditions. And uh, if he doesn't, he can get it you know, revoked. If he does, it, it should end. There should be an ending. Leaving it open-ended, I think that's a, it's a bit of a, that's, a bit of a, I, I have a problem. Um, to Alder Perella's point, would it be all right, or would it be acceptable to the police department if we changed wanding to times of the day or specific days? Yeah, absolutely. That would be, that would That's be acceptable. the intent is to... So if we were to say like Friday and Saturday from nine to close, they had to wand and then they could allow minors in would that be acceptable would that be acceptable for mr rapinski well the, the problem with wanding and and we, we met with mr walsh at my office back in october and 
I think everybody understands that if you want your patrons, that is like death to your business because you don't want to come into a business where you're uh, getting one. And we're the only bar in Sheboygan that is required to wand people. And I, I strongly disagree that we ever agreed to those conditions. Uh, what happened was back in 2022, uh, Mr. Adams said you had to have a written agreement signed by you. It was in his correspondence of February 24th, 2022. We don't have an agreement that's signed by Mr. Rapinski. There were some negotiations between my associate and Mr. Adams, and those, as far as I can see, never materialized into a written agreement. And the fact that Mr. Adams is sending out letters to Mr. Rapinski um, uh, after these meetings are made, where there's uh, a decision that this renews annually, is just incredibly unfair. And if you if you want all customers as was the requirement, you will not have a business anymore. And everybody acknowledges that. So I guess may, just, yeah, just to be different, I, I don't acknowledge that. And, and I don't think that the Bucks or the Packers would acknowledge that either. Sure. So what if we put a guaranteed expiration date on this? Wolfie said by 2025, this is it. It's all you get everything back. Would that be acceptable? We're putting a definitive date for saying wanding for from now until when the license is issued again for for two days a week from high time from we can even make it 930 or 10 to close. Would that be acceptable? We, we feel that the track record we have compiled mm -hmm. since the spring of 2021 2022 when this came down and there was this incident on uh, new year's eve by the way we prevailed on when we went to municipal court we were found not guilty of violating the abatement plan and over serving on two counts but obviously it's a different forum <laughs> and i understand that but we were found not guilty um we do object to that and we object because we have been compliant and police friendly for the past two years plus. And we don't believe we need any more conditions than the uh, establishment across the street on either side. So to echo uh, the Alderman's um, uh, sentiments, we, we think the condition should be deleted entirely. All right, uh, Alder Heidemann, then. Hey, Thank you, right. Chair. Um, I'd be all in favor of allowing underage patrons in yes. because, again, as uh, the alderman uh, suggested, that whole area is changing. That's a lot of food uh, and stuff like that for a family. So I would not, again, I would not want to have to have my granddaughter want it or, or not allowed on a, uh, on a facility that I wanted to go get something to eat. I want to be able to spend time with them. I'd also be in favor of, of um, making some adjustments as far as the wanting is concerned. Okay, but to the fact that we have these conditions, whether he signed them or not, and then Lieutenant Walsh, we, we saw where they were, he was in violation of the conditions, that doesn't make any sense. And so you say, well, well, we'll just forget about when he violated, or he didn't scan, or he didn't, uh, and, or he, he didn't use the, the card tracer. Well, that's okay. Well, that's not okay. That should be running continuously. That should have been there. That should have been uh, uh, foremost in his operation to make sure that is done on a daily basis and to follow these and, and follow these guidelines. But again, there are some changes I'd like to see on there. Okay, and I'd also like to keep an open dialogue with with him as far as looking at any of the other conditions that he might want to have removed in the future, and I'll also put a date. A time period on, on, on these requirements. Other would say, okay, I uh, think a point here that a lot of people are, are, are missing is that uh, Dave's Who's In is a large building with two different floors. The 
lower floor is your typical tavern restaurant. The upper floor is what a lot of people say that they're going clubbing. It's a club. Uh, they're kind of two different entities here, but they're owned by the same person. So the liquor license cover both of them. But uh, maybe we could make some kind of caveat on this where, uh, because I believe most of the problems that happen, happen on the upper floor in what it's called the club, you know, where people go clubbing. Uh, if that's where most of the problems are happening, maybe that's where these uh, conditions should definitely apply to. Because I agree with Alderman Heidemann, I wouldn't want my grandkids to have to be wanted to get a fish dinner. I would ask the police department whether they believe that that is true, that the violations are only occurring in one portion of the night. <laughs> um, that is, I think, an assumption that, that you might make. I can speak to a factual incident that happened on August 22nd last year. I don't have my calendar with me, so you tell me if that's a weekend or not, but there was a, an assault that happened outside the bar right in front of the door. Okay. The um, person was driving a bike past and said something racially disparaging to a group and got his got beat up because of it. And the police department was able to identify that these people were out on the sidewalk having a cigarette break from being inside the bar. So really the bar had nothing to do with it other than, but of course the police wants that ID scanner, right? Mm. That would really make things super easy for us. Um, and uh, we were originally told that the ID scanner, um, the bouncers don't use it that it just wasn't available right now that we'd have to come back. Then the story changed, um, that the ID scanner was not working and that they were sent away to a company in California called Mark's Cards. I got in touch with Mark's Cards and, and they immediately responded to me and appeared to be very helpful and then cut off all communication. With me. Then Dave and I played phone tag back and forth for a while to try to iron some things out. <coughs> I ended up going there on a Friday night around 7, 7.30. I went in, the place was pretty quiet, but there was a group of patrons drinking alone at a corner, sharing a pitcher of beer. And I simply went up there to ask them, this is probably September, 2023. Were you wanted when you came in? The answer resoundingly was no. Um, so that's, to answer your question, I, ho I hope that just gives you some perspective, I guess. Can I respond to that, please? Yeah. Um, regarding the, the scanning, I, kn I know uh, uh, Mr. Walsh is skeptical of the reason, but we provided him with all our emails and the frustration um, uh, in working with this vendor in California was palpable in the emails that we uh, sent out to this vendor. They would not fix the scanner. We went, ended up buying a new scanner and then getting that one fixed. Now we have two scanners that they use all the time. Uh, regarding the wanding, uh, I think another issue that you should be aware of is when Mr. Walsh asked that person about being wanded, they were rather upset about it and they were offended by that. And that's what happens when you get wanded and especially when it's racially based or it appears to be that way, that's a problem. And no one else is asked to do that. And I have made open records requests asking in the past 10 years, give me some reports relating to weapons related issues on the premises. And I was thwarted completely in those requests. I don't believe that there are those problems in the tavern that exist. There might have been something that occurred outside of the tavern. And maybe these people were drinking at some point. But inside of the tavern, there are no weapons-related issues that I have been apprised of. All right. Before I ask, brief walk around, has there been any weapons issues in the basement in the last few years? Not inside, no. Not inside, no. Okay, thank you. Other Perella. So this, for example, the incident. Um, so this is a licensing. 
hearings and public safety committee. So our duty is to think of safety for the city. I want that district to be safe. I want the city to be safe as, as and I would do anything for that. Now, the incident that um, Lieutenant Walsh was referring to on August 19th, group of people drunk outside of the, the establishment. They were not inside, they were outside. If one of those patrons had a weapon, that incident could have been escalated to levels that we don't want to <coughs> imagine, right? So the fact that um, that people are wanted or that some establishments at times re have that requirement, I don't feel that that is um, unheard of or that is unjustified. Again, for safety reasons, there are if they, the, however, I'm happy to hear that there was there has been no history of issues about that because that is that makes a difference as well. No history of weapons issues at that tavern, and I've never heard. So I've been in that neighborhood for ten years. I don't remember anything about that, even before two years ago. There was two incidents in 2021 that involved patrons at the tavern where it happened out in the parking lot. Okay. Are, you, are there any other questions from the committee? So you're, Mr. Rapinski is asking for a total He There's no budget at all on this. I don't believe so. This is not an arbitration, so right. you don't have to choose between all or nothing. Right. Um, you may choose to do something in between. Obviously, this is still a it is still a voluntary action to be taken by Mr. Rapinski that you're requesting in lieu of a revocation hearing. Mm -hmm. So, if he chooses not to take whatever action, you know, whatever reduced or non-reduced set of conditions you you ask then the next step would be the revocation hearing okay so would anybody like to make a motion based on what attorney adams said whether it be reduced wanding no wanding getting rid of the no underage uh persons on the premises or anything of that nature yeah, I would like to file a motion to um, remove from the conditions the uh, the um, removing the the obligation of not accepting uh, the minors. So removing that conditions and making the the wanting conditions limited to um, weekends, 10 p.m. to closing. Um, Friday through Sunday, and these conditions should be considered limited to this license, and next year's license should be considered uh, a new start based on the episodes and uh, events, based on uh, past history. Any, any, as any other license is. Um, scrutinized and looked at. I'll second it. I would like to make an, an amendment to that, that uh, if during the period of that license, the defined period of time, that any violation that would occur in the meantime would mean the license is gone. So you you can't do that okay. because right. to take away the license still requires a hearing. hearing. Okay, yeah. that it would go directly to hearing. So you don't need to have that in there because basically the process that's followed is when there are violations, the staff needs to talk about them to determine whether they're enough to bring them to you okay. for a hearing. All right. All right. All those in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye. So we will move on. So then what I'll just say is we'll send another letter indicating the, the new conditions and uh, we'll, we'll go from there.
from there, obviously. Um, Attorney Hahn and Mr. Rapinski will have the opportunity to respond to that. All right. Okay. So we're going to move to item number 11 on the agenda. Beverage offer license application number 502. Scott A. Cody. A hearing regarding denial of um, yeah. And please let me know if you can't hear me. I am getting over a cold. Um, so if you need me to speak up, please let me know. Um, so Mr. Felby requested a hearing today for the de denial um, by the clerk of his beverage operator's license. Um, Mr. Feldy revealed a 2009 felony conviction for conspiracy to deliver cocaine. Um, he also failed to re uh, review, uh, reveal an older conviction for possession of cocaine with intent deliver. Both of those convictions make him automatically ineligible to receive the license. He would need a pardon from the governor in order to um, get those convictions overturned and to be able to get the license. Alrighty, Mr. Belly. Um, first off, Chuck, thank you for your candor when you called. Um, I appreciate it. Um, part of why I'm here is because, I, although you did tell me that, I have to prove to my employer that I went through everything possible to get my license. Um, and I'm currently employed at two different taverns. Uh, but everybody I've talked to cannot find this stipulation in state law that says my convictions uh, that you mentioned uh, prevent me from getting that license. So I guess I would kind of like to know if it's a statute or what it is from the state that says I can't. And if so, is it a lifetime ban um, would be my next question. Um, I haven't had so much as a traffic citation in 14 years. Don't get me wrong. I have a criminal history. I have a past and I'm warming up to that. Um, but we talk about reform, rehabilitation, stuff like that. And But then you get kind of blocked in these type of situations. And I understand, uh, you know, firearms. <laughs> you probably can't have a firearm. And I do, I do understand that. But if I'm allowed to legally work with another licensed bartender, I just don't understand why this would last a, a lifetime. You know what I mean? I can vote. Apparently, I can run for president. Uh, you, know, <laughs> um, you know, and I can't carry a firearm. And, and that I do understand. It's not like a, like another person that's licensed to carry a firearm would let me do that either. You know what I mean? Um, and I know the comparisons aren't equal, but. Um, there were just some questions I had, and uh, you know, if, if if there's a time limit, and so what it would be, and <coughs> and what that statute number or bylaw or whatever the heck it's called would be, and uh, um, that's I, pretty simple to me. I think I'll read this. Yeah. So, uh, 125.04 is what the basically what says whether you can have a license or not, and. 12504 basically says anybody with a felony record can't receive a license. However, it provides an exception under uh, Chapter 111, where there's a whole series of provisions that are sort of exceptions to that under the Fair Employment Act. And those conditions basically say that if it's unrelated to the license activity, then that 12504 does not apply. And then there's an exception to the exception that in, in 111, I, I wish I could remember off the top of my head the precise site, but it is in chapter 111, uh, that says, but in any case, if it is one of these, I think it's four convictions, one of which is possession with intent to deliver, then that exception doesn't apply and you still aren't able to get the license. There is no, uh, there's no time frame on it. it it's not provided for uh, in the statute, which is why we had the discussion about, you know, my encouraging you to try to get it, get a part of it, because I will, I'll agree with you policy-wise that it doesn't make sense for this to have to, to go forever, right. but we also have to apply the law. As right, right. I, I do, I do understand that. And like I said, I appreciate your time and your candor when you called. You did kind of explain that to me, but. I wasn't aware of, and like I said, my both of my employers they even talked talk, talk to the Tavern League. They're both part of the Tavern League, and they couldn't come up with an answer either. So apparently somebody's maybe not digging into it as deep as you did or, or know the verse thing as well as you do. Um, but uh, it's, 
just seems to me 30 years is a long time to go back. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's something you guys can change. Are there any questions from the committee? No? Yeah. yeah, just a comment that obviously this is not our decision, it's, it's a statute's decision. I mean, based on a statute, and I, I would recommend to go through that process of the pardon if uh, Governor Evers seems to be taken into consideration pardons quite a bit. So I, I would recommend that route if you want to try it. Yeah, I'm going to try it. I, we'll see what happens in about three and a half years when they make a decision. <laughs> but uh, that person I know that actually got her, is, she didn't even have a criminal record and she was becoming a nurse. And uh, she had that one charge, and it took her about three years to get to part. But she got it. So, but uh, if that's it, I, I appreciate everybody's time. I was actually kind of privileged to be involved and see how you guys do what you do. I'm just a lay person. I'm not a business owner. Uh, it's kind of cool to see what you guys do. Well, thank you for coming in. Um, we definitely don't want to revoke licenses. Yeah. Oh, I, it's I, one I'm of sure the last that. things we really want to do. So, All right. And it's, I, I see where it's, I see both sides actually. And just being a general member of the public, I don't think a lot of people get to see that. Well, number one, they don't take the time to come here. And see it. So maybe, maybe this will help you guys get a little more face time in the press as compared to everybody else. Um, all right, I guess I'm looking for a motion. Move the file. Is that what we would do? Or yeah, so he requested a hearing. I think basically what you would say is that you're uh, upholding the denial the, the decision of the court right okay. so looking for that motion so we'll move that way yeah. that could you i mean could you i don't know could it be put as upholding state law not that sure you're we can say that yes. any other conduct or anything <laughs> just just saying but uh, i definitely appreciate you guys time thank you sorry right. all those in favor all right. Aye. 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 chair votes aye that's approved thank you for coming in thank you guys all righty now we'll get to the actual top of the agenda i am number six general ordinance number 14-24-25 direct referral and ordinance amending section 48-32322 of the sheboygan municipal code to remove the mandatory neighbor approval for street festival and special events permits so this change is designed to rem remove the automatic what i call neighbor veto so under our current ordinance, if any neighbor in the area says, I don't want them to get that um, festival permit or special event permit, they can't get it. Mm -hmm. This does not take away the ability of the police department, public works department to consider the neighbor's opposition, but, does, but makes it that it is not automatic. Has this been the night before? Because the neighbors, is there an area where somebody wants to have a a, a block party, and the, one of the neighbors says, "I don't care about being on his block." Yes, specifically, I think they're dealing with with one having to do with the uh, front first market. Yeah, in bulk park. There's been yeah, others in the past. Okay. All right. All righty. Any other questions? No. This was, uh, from what I understand. They're trying to uh, block off the street so that you could have more vendors during the, the amount of time that the farmer's market is on so that they could have more vendors there and uh, you know, it would uh, make for more business. And also, it's a really good thing because we have kind of a food desert in downtown Sheboygan. Uh, fresh vegetables are a, a good thing to have for the people that live down there. So. Uh, we have a lot of thoroughway blocking off one road, I don't think would cause, or it, does the police think that that would cause uh, any kind of traffic problems for the amount of time that the farmer's market would go on to, uh, let's say, block off A Street there on the east side of Buffalo Park? I, I'm going to just sort of jump in and say that's outside this ordinance, oh, okay. um, but conditions like that are still able to be considered so so while you're approving here you're not approving the farmer's market no. that that they'll still follow the process basically what you're saying is that the police no longer have to say sorry we have to not approve it simply because there's one person who didn't sign off on the, but yet one person or 
a person could uh, bring a an argument. Yes, a person could still. So if the person who is complaining about that event or any of the other events, you know, expresses that to the police department or to the DPW for the special events, that may still be considered. It just doesn't. It's not automatic. Okay. Understood. Other problem. Yeah, I would like to propose an amendment on that change. Um, so I don't know if we have to um, uh, prove it first and then amend, or I can just by, um, make a motion to amend. You can make an motion to amend. I didn't take a copy of the um, actual ordinance with me. So, so the, the amendment that I'm thinking of is mm -hmm. just to um, have a which section are you referring to? I'm referring to to C1 okay. C19E. C9. So you, you're, yeah, C9, yeah. you're yeah. proposing to add a. What I'm trying to, what I would like to have is to basically remove the last part, but leave the part in which we ask for the people to be informed. So it could be a list of all adults who reside or do business on the to be closed portion of the street and a statement that all of the identified adults have been informed. So I, I would like to make sure that people are informed since there is no other place in the ordinance indicating that people are informed. So did you was there a motion and a second on the original? No, nobody seconded it yet. No, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So oh, no, there wasn't one on the original. <laughs> the original. So, so I, I'm going to, I'll kind of help you through it, but I think probably what you need to do is make a motion to approve as right. written, second it, and then we'll right. talk about your motion and I'll sort of yeah. motion. Nobody made okay. a motion to approve it, but right. Elder Perella wanted to um, right. amend the order. Can I speak? Yeah. I, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the business. I own the flower cards on A Street. Well, so and because we're not at the at the amendment yet, I think okay. you should you should get it on the floor. Take okay. the motion and then the second. Then take the motion um, to amend. Okay. And and then open it up if you wish. Is that that works? That's fine. Okay. So right. you're going to cram this through and then ask for input. Hang on. So what we're going to do is we're we're not voting on it yet. We're just making a motion and seconding it. If there's no vote on it, then Alder Perella will make a motion to amend. And we still have not voted on it. I'll give you the ability to speak, and then after you speak, we'll discuss more, and then we'll make a then we'll vote on it. We're not cramming anything through. We just have to follow these procedures. So I'm looking for a motion on the original ordinance change. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. And then, so what I'm, what I would suggest yeah. is now you would make your amendment to your motion to amend, and it would be to amend sub C to read a list of all adults who reside or do business on the to be closed portion of the street, and a statement that all of the identified adults have been contacted about the temporary street closure. In other words, merely remove it right. and do not object. I agree with that. Okay, so I make a motion to amend um, subsection 9, 9C um, to leave, so to have, to read a list of all adults who reside or do business on the to be closed portion of the street and the statement that all of the identified adults have been contacted uh, about the temporary street closure. Okay. All righty. Now I'll open it up to you. You, you got to get a second. Oh, I need a second for that. Oh, second. All right. Now I'll now okay. we'll open it up to you. Okay. Well, I just want to get my my sure. perspective on it. Um, I own a business on East Street. I was there before the farmers market, and when I bought the building, I was given all this information from the city about how how good the traffic patterns were on this intersection that made us determine that this was a good place to have, have business. And now I find out that two days a week, they want to close the street and uh, for like six months of the year. And they want to redo the park to have more festivals, more street closures. Uh, you know, this was not acceptable to me to have to close the street for 
two of them, my six days that I'm open. And again, we're not voting, you're not voting whether to close the street at this point. So that's, that would, that's that not would not make it a lot but easier. For teens to. Yeah. That, that the issue is whether you change it, not whether the street will close, because his objection will still, under this, or under this, would still be heard, it's just that it wouldn't be automatic. Would it come back to this committee for that? For a street closure. No, it would it would follow the process uh, under the ordinance, which in this case is for for a um, street festival or a block party or a special event. Uh, basically, it would be a review uh, starting with the uh, Department of Public Works, but circulated among the departments of the city clerk, transit, city attorney, police department, and fire department. And since with this amendment, they will be contacted and informed, mm -hmm. it is part of the application for the special event. So if they want to still object, they can object. Okay. Are there any other? Yep. Object to what effect? If it's already in place, they can say, okay, we hear your objection and go forward with what they have planned. And there's you know, I have very a financial recourse. investment in this, and, you know, and if I want to retire in a few years and, and try to sell the building, you know, this is going to be hard because they're going to see all these street closures all the time. I think that what you we have to be careful about is they are not deciding on that street closure here today. So your focus on that particular uh, issue is actually a violation of public meetings laws and, and, and the chair can't let you talk about that. Okay. But which are making it much you, easier. But what you can, yes, and that is a valid point, and I think that's the point that you're trying to make. Yes, it's not. It's not just a matter of them being there. They spoke at the meeting where they were discussing changes, future changes for Fountain Park, and uh, what they would do as far as the street closure. And they talked about not only closing off the street, having the food trucks on our side of the street and it just as it is it's so difficult for anyone to be able to get near the shop on wednesdays or saturdays and the guy was assuming that people could just park in the big lot behind i said well, what are they going to do on wednesdays that's full of county employees that's their lot and if you park there you're going to get a ticket so again that's not the issue here food truck parking is not part of this one <laughs> It's not, but it would create a big hassle and really choking off access on Wednesdays and Saturdays to the business. So, Father Heidemann. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> in developing this ordinance and having making this decision whether or not to put, where, where is the bid in this? Where has has this passed through the bid district? Saying okay, it's in front of the district. Okay. Thanks. Well, and the ordinance is a is citywide, so the bid district wouldn't be involved okay. in an ordinance that is citywide. Right. Are there any other questions? Alder Perla. I'm still thinking, though, that if uh, people have so businesses or residents have um, have the option of objecting um, whenever, depending on the on the event. That is the option is there. And if, for example, I know we are not discussing that, but if, for example, all the businesses on eight that stretch are not in agreement or object, that would be um, obviously considered. I mean, it cannot be just a, for example, one business that say, oh, I don't like it for whatever reason, because there is arguments on all sides, right? Maybe you argue for not being good and some other business may say, hey, for me, it's great. Saturday is fantastic for me, for, for my food. Well, the problem is I'm the only retail business on A Street, on that section of A Street. So there's no services doesn't. There is nobody else to any complain. Purpose. <laughs> the bar, he doesn't open till seven, so it's a non-issue. And VistaCare used to be retail, and that's no so, longer. But again, I think we're, we're yeah, getting, yeah. We're getting right. to specifics so, when we're talking about generalities, but I would say that still in the ordinance is yeah. the provision that applications to close a street or lane may be denied yeah. if, and then there's a number of things, one of them is such closure will likely or will tend to cause an unreasonable traffic congestion result in disturbance of the peace, endanger the public health, safety, and welfare. 
Also, access to a business place would be hampered. Also, any adult residing or establishment conducting business at the to be closed portion of the street objects. All those are still correct. that you may deny for those reasons. <clears throat> that is correct. Uh -huh. that, that is, I, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I actually had read that, and that's the reason I'm thinking this is still a very solid ordinance for once for someone who wants to object. So, so there is this the the D the D four <laughs> explicitly say any adult residing or establishing establishment conducting business at the to be closed portion of the street object to the temporary street closure. So that option is there. It's just that you don't put the bar, the burden on the people who have to um, are organizing that event to go and ask for approval from each individual business. Sure. Alrighty. Are there any other questions or comments? Just a reminder, you're still on the amendment. Yeah. All in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Now we're talking about the whole as amended. as amended. Are there any other questions or comments on the motion as a whole, as the ordinance as a whole? Alrighty, I'm looking for uh, all in favor. All right, aye. aye. All opposed. Chair votes aye. As approved. I am number seven, general ordinance number 11 24 25, an ordinance amending section 38 59 of the Shibuya Municipal Code so as to modify regulations pertaining to consuming intoxicating beverages in so this is an ordinance change that creates a new exception to the ordinance that makes it illegal uh, to consume or carry open intoxicants in public. Right now, uh, um, there are some specific ones like the street festival permits. This adds the ability to create temporary designated outdoor refreshment areas, DORA or DORAs, uh, where alcohol would be able to be carried and consumed. It does provide for some restrictions on the boundaries of those areas. So even if it, even if it's in a widespread area, uh, it doesn't include streets that are open to the public, except for where there are actually crosswalks or other legally designated pedestrian crossing areas. Are there any questions or comments? Oh, there any? Sure. Uh, back in the day when they used to have broad festivals in, in the city of Sheboygan, I was just a little kid, but they were drinking all over the place. I mean, they walked, it was like one of those days where who really cared? And uh, the, the problem I have with designating these areas is, does that person that's been drinking for a while decide, well, now my area includes this area here, over here too, and they can wander about with their alcohol. Or is that gonna uh, make it harder for the police department to monitor uh, these open areas? Um, be able to make sure that it's under it's in a, a controlled environment as opposed to somebody that just says well uh it's okay it was the street it was right over there but now i'm going to be walking over my car and i'm going to carry my beer with me uh you know I, that's i have a have a problem with people just doing whatever they want after they've had enough to consume so all righty uh SPD, would that does this ordinance have a do you have an issue with this I think it depends how it's how it's implemented. Really. Sure. So what we've discussed when it's been brought to us is that as long as the marketing and signage and those things that are in place, so that those that are involved understand what the boundaries are, it's it's fine. Uh, and the other thing is as long I, I think once we're we're creating permanent doras, mm -hmm. we're in a different situation than what we're doing right here, which is essentially temporary. Okay. Would there have to be uh, hard boundaries? Okay. Maybe. I, I don't know what you mean by hard. You said uh, like a roped off area or a. Uh, yeah. No, it, but they do have to be defined, right. meaning that they are specific. Yeah. Yes. I assume you're talking about fences. Yeah. Okay. Mayor Sorensen. Yeah, just just a little context too of some of the work that we've done on this too. So this is it's here coming to you as a temporary for the boat races. This has been a request. Mm -hmm from the boat race uh, well, organization. that's actually the next item. So this is another <laughs> okay. one of those. Let's well, this is, about, it's, generalities and then we'll 
Well, the generality is that this has been a request uh, that the Chamber of Commerce has had, as well as the bid, as well as some businesses in the area. Um, and did talk with Attorney Majerus today and Captain Kaczynski, as well as uh, Mike Wilmis and some other folks at DPW today. We had a, a, a meeting. Um, I won't talk about the specific meeting. I'll talk about a general meeting uh, <laughs> to talk about signage uh, so that we can make sure that law enforcement have the tools that they need to have. Uh, we'll be able to talk about that when we get to A. Just <laughs> some general context for uh, this as well. Alrighty. Any other comments, questions? Looking for a motion. I make a motion to um, recommend. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. All right. Item number eight. Resolution number 42-24-25, a resolution authorizing the creation of a temporary designated outdoor refreshment area during the 2024 Mercury Racing Midwest Challenge of August 9th, 9th through the 11th, 2024. Maybe the mayor wants to talk. Maybe. Yes. So this is, this is we're pitching it as a pilot, uh, given the go, working with the bid and a lot of local businesses on South Pier primarily, uh, communicating uh, with them and making sure that they have the right tools to benefit from uh, the boat race last year. Obviously, uh, we had 40,000 visitors come, $4.7 million of economic investment. So we want to make sure that we can provide the tools uh, for businesses uh, to take advantage economically uh, as well, as well as folks to have fun um, as well. And previous to my other statements, you know, we're working with DPW to talk about signage um, for the area itself, as well as making sure that we have correct communication to the businesses and working with the bid to help push out communication of uh, what the containers or designated containers look like as well. So just some context of what's uh, what other organizations have been involved in this. Although with Would there uh, be the ability of uh, having charitable organizations running some of the beverage stands so that they could make profit for their charitable organization? I don't think that's part of this. No, that's, that's a separate. Yeah, that's that's a separate. Yeah. Yeah. So you could somebody could get a temporary picnic license within the DORA, but that they would still have to follow the process for getting it. Okay. Yeah. They kind of okay. alter. Uh, alter thank, you, sure. thank you, sure. Thank you, I think this is a great move. I think this basically shows every other community or any other organization that wants to bring something into the city of Sheboygan that that we're allowing to have this happen and make it. Uh, that more accessible for them, and then, and then we're uh, applying what we can to make this a better place to hold those types of events. Already, any other comments, questions? Looking for a motion. Move to approve. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. Alrighty. I am I'm waiting nine. for an amendment. <laughs> <laughs> I am number nine, resolution number 47-24-25, direct referral, re a resolution authorizing the fire chief to execute an agreement with the city of Manitowoc Fire Department, allowing the city to borrow an ambulance to have as a reserve for the Mercury Racing Midwest Challenge powerboat race event from August 8th through the 12th, 2024. Mm -hmm. Chief. Thank you, Chair. So uh, similar to what we did last year, we required, uh, we're required we required to have a boat at the pits. Um, otherwise, they can't a do the boat. You're required to I mean, a uh, See, this is how we get so uh, stuff. Hicks and A on the open say, uh, an ambulance for the boats <laughs> at the pits. Uh, otherwise, they can't do the race. So um, due to our limited numbers, uh, we're just asking to borrow one from Manitowoc like, like we did uh, last year. Uh, the direct referrals because of the timeline, uh, their attorney, our chief, their chief, uh, you know, just vacations. Do we pay for it? No, no the, they just let us borrow it. Okay. Yeah, the only thing we pay our supplies if we okay. use them. Um, right. And obviously, if there right. was something that happened, we would maintain it. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments? Looking for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. I should have said that. All those in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Item number 10, resolution number 43-24-25, a resolution authorizing entering into a professional services agreement with Angel Wessels LLC for peer support training services for the Sheboygan Fire Department. So, yep, thank you, Chair. So um, we have a peer support uh, team internally for our fire uh, personnel. Um, this is uh, 
dealing with mental health and, and issues that may arise, um, whether it's on duty or off duty for our members. Uh, this individual, uh, Angela Wessels, uh, owns a business and, and uh, is a professional, um, I want to say counselor, but that's not her exact, yeah, her exact title. But And uh, so she is going to, this agreement would allow her to uh, do two trainings for our personnel internally for the department, and then also be a, uh, a go-to person for our peer support team to call for advice. Um, she is not going to be the one-on-one -on -one peer support that would come out just to offer advice. Uh, that's what this agreement would be. Um, but because she owns a business, they could go see her on their own sure. if they needed to. That's what this agreement does. Allows her to train our members, uh, the whole department, and then be available for phone calls. Uh, we will meet twice uh, if the agreement is approved. Uh, to starting next year, I'll meet with her twice to see how things are going, if if it's worth it, if we want to continue that relationship, or if we should trip it. Alrighty. Um, do we use her for Sheboygan Police Department or no? Nope. Okay. Uh, any other questions, comments? Alder Pro. Yeah, I just want to applaud it. Yeah, and for the cost, you know, it's it's relatively, uh, I mean, definitely affordable. At this point, so it's it's a great idea, and a great support that uh, we can provide our employees. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Looking for a motion. I make a motion to approve. I second. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> Chair votes aye. That is approved. Skip down to item number fourteen and RO number. 32-24-25 by the city clerk submitting various license applications. Um, so staff is recommending granting the applications, um, noting that one of the applications for Sunday Doe LLC should be contingent upon the application or the applicant correcting her application and staff determining that there are no concerns. So basically what she did is she selected both yes and no when answering if she had ever done a or committed a felony or been convicted for a felony. So unfortunately, we have to ask her to clarify. Um, otherwise, that is the most perfect application I have ever seen. So. <laughs> Alrighty. Any questions? Yeah. So is is there a license available for them? They're just applying for that here and here and why? Yeah, it's not. Oh, yeah. It's not a. Uh, it's, no, it's not a big. There's okay. not a quota for that. There is no quota for that. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Alrighty. Any other questions, comments? All right, looking for a motion. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. All righty, I am number 15, RO number 35-24-25 by C. Clerks Ming, license application. Staff is just recommending granting the applications. Any questions, comments? Looking for a motion. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Our next meeting date will be August 14, 2024. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned at 5.53. Thank you. Thank you.